a very good afternoon to all in this session we are going to see unit number 5 of satellite communication okay, let us start today's class so unit 5 title is satellite applications okay the different applications that was evolved from time to time which you are going to see in this unit so since the launch of uh, sputnik 1 that was launched by the soviet union or ussr thousands of satellites have been launched into the orbit around the world so these satellites are being used for large number of purposes so the mainly there are many types of services being provided by the satellites so one of them is your military for which initially this was deployed in space then following that following the application in military the civilian earth observation satellites came into existence then the demand for communication made the evolution towards communication satellites in navigation and in weather forecasting so we are going to observe the main usages of satellites in this presentation okay so 1945 raf electronics officer r2 c clark in a short article in wireless world described the use of <coughs> manned satellites in 24 hour orbits high above the world's land masses to distribute television programs in 1957 the launch of sputnik 1 emerged the race between the superpowers the ussr and the usa for benefits space superiority and prestige associ association with the satellite communications started to begin so in 1960 the at and t laboratories filed with the federation commissions for permission to launch an experimental communication satellite so further in 1962 telstar relay was launched so that provided glimpses of global village idea so covering a particular location then telstar captured or televised some parts of the 1964 tokyo olympics then following that in 1963 the syncom was being launched so this is the first artificial satellite you can see the picture of that which is sputnik 1 which was launched by soviet union in the year 1957 a satellite is an artificial object which has been intentionally placed into orbit those objects are sometimes called artificial satellites such that we can distinguish them from the natural satellites such as moon satellites are being used for a large number of purposes space stations and human spacecraft in orbit are also called as satellites about there are about uh, 6600 satellites have been launched out of which only 1000 are active only 1000 satellites are active and the remaining 3000 uh, or about about uh, 3600 are still remaining in uh, orbit so 4600 is the count so remaining 2000 is in operative in operative my or might be discarded remain so the satellites are propelled by rockets to their orbits usually the launch vehicle itself would becoming a would become a rocket lifting 
from a launch pad on land. Satellites are usually semi-independent computer control systems. Satellite subsystems attend many tasks such as power generation, thermal control, etc. Satellites have been an interest to military Yes, there's a basic uh, non-military satellite service which has been provided. You can see, you can see the left hand side, you have a picture. So this is your launch vehicle or the rocket which takes the satellite to the space. So these are the guiding centers. If you see in uh, ISRO, you have uh, launch pads. One, two, and three. Depending upon the need and requirement, they are being used for uh, launching either PSLV or GSLV into space. <coughs> there are the basically three non-military satellite services which is being deployed one is the fixed satellite service mobile satellite system scientific research satellites which are commercial and non-commercial also so this is a type of a satellite first one is the astronomical satellite second one communication satellite third one weather satellite Fourth one, navigation satellite. So the fixed satellite service covers the link between satellites and uh, fixed objects that is non-moving earth stations. The receivers at the earth station will be fixed rather than moving or rather than dynamic. Whereas when you see mobile service covers links to stations that may be in motion, which may include your uh, marine, which may include your aeronautical, which may include your land mobile also. Okay. Marine in the case, locating the ships, which are in motion always. In aircraft, the Helicopters or aeroplanes will be in motion. So that is another service being provided by satellites. That is the DBS, which we had seen. Digital broadcast service, including TV and audio also. Which you would have seen as a DTH, direct to home. The fourth one is the inter-satellite service. Satellite to satellite communication or satellite to satellite crossing. Communication satellites. A spacecraft placed in orbit around the Earth which carries onboard microwave transmitting and receiving equipments capable of relaying signals from one point to another. So this uses microwave frequencies of 1 to 100 gigahertz. It is an example of a communication satellite which allows radio, television and telephone transmissions to be sent live anywhere in the world. 
before satellites transmissions were difficult or impossible at longer distances so from the transmitting edge station to the satellite we have the uplink frequency and from the satellite to the receiving edge station we have the downlink frequency so the uplink frequency will be always higher than the downlink frequency the signals which travel in straight lines could not bend around the earth to reach a destination far away so because satellites are in orbit the signals can be sent the uh, because satellites are in orbit signals can be sent instantaneously into space and then redirected to another satellite or directly to their destination this is your uh, very clutch view of global communication system so following the longitudes that were suggested for stations to provide the best service to the inhabited portions of the globe 30 degree east africa and europe 150 degree east china and oceania 90 degree west americas so each station would broadcast programs over a over about a third of a planet so this is an example of syncom2 synchronous communication satellite the launch date is 1963 july 26 the mass of the satellite is about 36 39 kilograms this was first geosynchronous satellite so this experimental communication satellite was placed over the atlantic ocean so a photograph before the launch into the space is this then the satellite communication technology how it evolved in chronological order 1964 intelsat form to as a watership of the satellites and the responsibility for managing of the global systems in 1965 intel set early bird the first commercial communication satellite was launched by early bird providing 150 telephone half circuits and 80 hours of television service then in 1969 intel set 3 series was the first to provide indian ocean coverage to complete the global network so this coverage was completed just days before 1 half billion people watched it so apollo 3 apollo 2 it's not apollo 2 land on the moon from uh, uh, from a few hundred telephone circuits and a handful of members in 1965 the intelsat has grown to a present day system with more me more members than the united nations and the capability of providing hundreds of thousands of telephone circuits It was possible only due to intelsat's ownership for satellites so this is intelsat 1 Early bird, you can see a satellite on which an astronaut is watching. any queries till this you can type in chat box
Since there are no queries, we move on to the next slide. In 1972, the Telsat Canada launched the first domestic communication satellite called ANIC. So this ANIC uh, converted from global level to domestic communications. So in April 13, 1974, the first US domestic communication satellite was launched, named Western Union's V Star One. In earlier 1976, AT&T and Comsat launched the first Comstar services. So these satellites were used for voice and data, but very quickly television became a major use user. By the end of 1976, there were 120 transponders available over US, each capable of providing uh, 1,500 telephone channels or one TV channel. In 1976, Palapa, third country. was to launch a domestic communication satellite launched by Indonesia. ANIC-1, this is a photograph of ANIC-1 launched by Telesat Canada in 1972. ANIC-1 was the first domestic communication satellite to serve the vast Canadian continental area. In 4A, was the first to use dual polarization in 1976. Marisat was the first mobile communication satellite being deployed in 1979. Imarsat was formed in 1988. TAT-8, which used the uh, fiber optic transatlantic telephone cable. The first fiber optic transatlantic telephone cable was being introduced. Then the ensuing decades had uh, very had seen uh, very significant changes. That is the satellite. It is a part of our our everyday life. Television still domi uh, dominates the satellite communications, but data has grown tremendously with the advent of very uh, small aperture terminals, V sats. The small antennas where uh, TV receive only TVRO or VSAT are a common place site all over the world. So due to the evolution of the VSATs, which is very small aperture terminals, which is used at your antenna point, due to that there is an enormous data being transmitted from to the Earth station through satellites, so which has made the possibility of life without satellite. Satellites found applications besides telecommunications and television also. They are weather, weather satellite, earth resource satellite, spy satellite. These were mostly in smaller orbits circling the earth in not south direction. They pass the earth once or more times every day and remain available only for a shorter duration as compared to geosatellites, the weather, spy and earth, earth resource satellite. The commercial earth observation satellites are available with a meter resolution while spy satellites have a millimeter resolution. The satellites can be used for ocean color, temperature scanning, advanced visible and near infrared radiometer, total ozone mapping spectrometer, monitoring for greenhouse gases, used in defense meteorological satellite programs. Used in special sensor, microwave image, imager, SSMI, visible plus SSM T1, visible plus SSM T2, temperature 1, temperature 2, and most sounders, which is a part of Earth resource satellite, is being used. So the rainfall measuring mission was launched in 1997 by Japan. 
So the applications of the satellites are internet access, military, telephone, television, digital cinema, radio. When an outdoor perspective, we can see. We had uh, discussed about the fixed satellite service. So let us see how this fixed satellite service is being deployed, or what is its an application? You can see. Earth station, which is present in the right hand side, you can see from the satellite it access data, and there is a monitoring here. So this is an example of a fixed service. So handheld in terms of millions of voice data and video transmission tasks across all countries and continents between certain points on the Earth surface is a fixed satellite. Whereas mobile satellite is that it helps connect remote regions, vehicles, ships, people, and aircraft to other parts of the world. Another mobile or stationary communication units in addition to serving as a navigation system. You can see ship is being monitored, ship services, this car services, this aircraft services is being done by mobile satellite system. So the mobile satellite communication. For uh, mobile satellite communication in 1936, Marisat was formed for military as well as civil marine communications. Three satellites were launched and uh, provided coverage of Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. So, in subsequent years, in 1978, in the third in 1979, Inmarsat was formed. The satellite resources were provided by Intelsat 5 for 10 years. So the MARI payload was called the MARI communication system or MCS, which was primarily used for maritime communications, which is in the oceans, tracking of ships, boats, fisheries, and so on. Communication between land and you know, ship which is present in sea or ocean. This system was analogous and was used for communication. In Mars at EA terminals became the primary means of maritime communication. So the payload was also very small. Starting in the year 1990, Inmarsat launched four second generation satellites which had a high power than Inmarsat five MCS system. Then smaller digital systems were developed in Marsat B, in Marsat C, in Marsat M and Mini M. The land mobile systems became practical and several domestic mobile satellites were being launched. With the introduction of the Motorola's launching of Iridium, the constellation of 77 low orbit satellites for providing global telephone services. A new concept of constellation of broadband services was born during 1991. <laughs> then more novel ideas followed. Teledisc proposed a constellation of 288 satellite constellation to provide internet and data services worldwide. Typically, the broadband constellation offered uh, high data rate connections in the range of hundreds of kilobits per second to megabits per second. These connections are, were generally intended for use for a very large number of low price terminals. So you can see globally, the Hughes based uh, satellites and space stations in blue and others who contributed, how they are being placed in space. In which latitude, which longitude, position, in which direction?
Next topic is the navigation satellites. A satellite navigation or a satellite system is a system of satellites that provide autonomous geospatial positioning with global coverage. So this allows small electronic receivers to determine their location to a high precision within a few meters. That uses the mostly will be using GNSS, which is a prominent navigation service, global navigation satellite service. In which a satellite navigation system with the global coverage can be done efficiently with good time synchronization. Then some of you would have studied the global position system in last semester. They would have been familiar of what is a GPS is. The global positioning system that consists of up to 32 medium Earth orbit satellites in six different orbital planes with the exact number of satellites varying as older satellites are retired and replaced. Since operation from 1978 and globally available, GPS is currently the world's most utilized satellite navigation system. The applications of these two are automobile, aircraft positioning, navigation, boats and ships, heavy equipment tracking, cyclists, hikers, climbers use the GPS for positioning, new exposure, and in spacecraft applications. Next is the observation satellites. You can see an example of an observation satellite. The single location where we can learn the most about our planet is found nowhere on Earth, but high above of the Earth's surface. The ability to fly satellites into space has changed all our lives in many ways. But the single greatest innovation has been availability of the new ways of seeing the world that satellites leave behind. You can see an observation satellite present in this picture. Is also an observation satellite. Most observation satellites carry instruments that should be used that can be operable, operatable at even uh, relatively low altitude positioning. So this monitoring of Earth's environment will enable a reliable assessment of global impact of human activity and likely the future extent of climate change. So this is an example of Geo Earth, sorry, uh, Google Earth secret places using geospatial system. You can see structure a building is like I would, this symbol is a building structure which is present in a place and this is an uh, veil structure where uh, deforestation is done exactly in the shape of a veil. These are secret places which is present. This is also another secret place which is viewed from top obtained from the satellite. And there is an uh, sensor places also. Unknown area in Russia is this place. This could be a hidden area. This could be a location which the government of Russia doesn't want to reveal to the Google or doesn't want to reveal to anybody person. So that place is hidden. It could be a military, it could be some places. So this is an example of a weather satellite is showing minus 18 degree Celsius in our mobiles. Application of that. So any queries in this pictures and slides, you can type in chat box. 
i'll give you 5 5 to 5 okay. minutes time if any queries are there you can type in chat box then i'll proceed further
since there now there are no queries i move, move on to the for, move further on to the next slide so the reasons for using microwave frequency in order to penetrate through the atmosphere the microwave frequency is being uh, chosen in order to handle wide band signals encountered in today's present scenario of communications we go for microwave frequencies and in order to make practical use of high antenna gains above the craft above the spacecraft we we use microwave frequencies which is being used in satellite this is an example of the source information that is being transmitted to your transmitter to the edge station to the satellite through, through the uplink then from the satellite to the edge station through the downlink and then to the receiver to the output information of a satellite communication system diagrammatic uh, representation this is the example earth is day earth, earth is day satellite is placed in space of about uh, approximately 36000 kilometers from the surface of the earth so then they monitor and then send it back then this and other same satellite communication how it works we have the earth which is present here then there is a satellite this present in space the signal from the earth is the uplink in red and again from the it again from the satellite it goes to the earth okay you can see here the signal from the satellite falls on the reflectors and it, and it is projected towards the antenna and thus feed up then it captures and goes away okay uplink is given in red and downlink is given in blue and how much area that the satellite can cover okay is called as footprint footprint of signal back to the earth so this is a pictorial representation the anatomy of satellite communication terminals is that we have a transmitted video goes through the modulation technique <coughs> an appropriate modulator then it is given to the up converter second up converter then to the high power amplifier a transmitter then to a transmitter filter then to the earth station's antenna so from the antenna it goes to satellite from the satellite receives to the <laughs> antenna in edge station then it comes to the receiver filter the low noise amplifier is used at your receiver then to the first down converter second down converter then a proper demodulator and it is given to your received video so these are the frequency bands used in different frequency bands the uplink frequency and downlink frequency with its corresponding bandwidth let's say c xku uses 500 megahertz bandwidth q band 100 megahertz v band sorry not 100 q band v band uses 1000 megahertz bandwidth so depending upon the bandwidth being used the uplink and downlink can be given in this table can they have a view on this
since there are no queries in the chat box, I further move on to the next slide, which the earth is present. The satellites revolving around the earth in this fashion. Okay, you can see the satellite can revolve from east to west. And along the equatorial in an inclined fashion. So the satellites are revolved in this fashion, you can see. The first one in this fashion, and it's called as geosynchronous orbit. Or geostationary. So satellite orbit by altitude was given by by the four different orbit determinations. One is Leo, low Earth orbiting, Mio, medium Earth orbiting, Geo, high Earth orbiting, and Geo stationary or Geo orbiting. So orbit should avoid uh, van Allen relation belts such that They are being properly connected between the satellite and but stations. The link should be appropriate. So it should avoid those. So the region of charged particles that can cause damage to the satellite. So this occurs at approximately 2000 to 4000 kilometer and uh, 13,000 to 25,000 kilometers. So the satellite should be placed above this. So the geostationary orbits and the non geostationary orbits are the classifications. So you can see how the geostationary orbits are present. It is your GSO, you can say GSO. Leo, Mio, Kyo, all coming under non geostationary orbits. Orbit types by altitude positioning. Leo is being positioned of about 500 to 1000 kilometers, Mio in 5000 to 15000, and around 36000 Geo, which covers majority of the Earth. So the time period is being given for Leo 1.6 to 1.8 hours, Mio 6 hours. For 10,000 kilometers and geo 24 hours. Leo. Leo is being positioned circular on or inclined with less than 1,400 kilometer altitude. The satellite travels sky from horizon to horizon in 5 to 15 minutes and needs end of strategy. So the earth station must track the satellite's positioning. So a large constellation of the satellites to cover the entire required is 66 for Leo. 66 satellites present in Leo can cover the entire earth. The Leo satellites need lower uh, radio frequency where low distances bed, low distances between satellite and ground means lower antenna gains with lower frequencies. So these are Leo applications. Leo applications are used in uh, voice, high speed data, <coughs> which uses iridium, is a system which comprises of 66 Leo satellites. Global Star with 48 satellites, Teledesk with the 288 satellites for high speed data service. This is also used in military surveillance, weather, monitoring, atmospheric studies, earth observation, remote sensing. And remote sensing of earth observations. 
which is used for uh, rescue and research, tracking plantation changes, polar ice cap monitoring, new applications. So, Mio, Geo, Geo. Different services provided are in Mio, Ellipso, Intermediate Circular Orbit, Odyssey, Navistar, Archimedes. All are meant for voice and data communication systems. The radar or the radio determination and radio navigation is also done in Hio. Whereas in Hio, Molini and Tundra, where the communication services are at high in Geo, the direct broadcast service, fixed satellite service, and inter satellite links are being done in Geo. So this is here. You can see picture. Mio applications. Global position system is a Mio satellite system. The GPS satellites the receiver able to see four GPS satellites.
Comparison of orbit types Leo, Neo, and Geo. Leo advantages are that uh, it requires less power with lower delay times, more frequency reuse, suitable for global positioning with the smaller handsets. Disadvantage is that it requires large number of satellites. Complex in the handoffing, atmospheric drag is there, multiple satellite hops, which creates larger delays. Mio has advantages of uh, lesser handoff than that of Leo, and uh, it has less propagation delay than compared with Geo, but it requires the more satellites than Geo to cover the entire coverage of the Earth. Which is a greater, greater disadvantage. And this MIO has greater delays, larger delays, and propagation losses compared, compared to MIOs. The advantages of GEO is that it can cover almost the entire world with. Uh, three to four satellites, which can continuously monitor one point on Earth's surface, which is used as a best for broadcasting. So the disadvantage elevations.